Hi my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we're going to be talking about the Cassian Andor series, the Bad Batch and more. As always my dear friends before we dive into it please may I ask you to hit that big red subscribe button if you've not done so and also be sure to give that bell a good old tickle to be alerted each and every time that I post a new video. So without much further ado and without any more jibber jabber let's dive straight into it. So we're going to start with the big piece of news of the day. Star Wars Andor has officially finished filming. This is exclusive from Bespin Bulletin and we're going to see what they have to say. Afterwards I want to talk more broadly about what we can expect from this Rogue One prequel and some details that that have been floating around. But first of all my dear Megalorians, let's dive into the article. Exclusive Andor has finished filming. After speaking with multiple sources, I can confirm that Andor has finally wrapped. Last week, I checked with my Pinewood Studios sources on the Andor production on August the 18th, and they were very much still busy filming, which I first mentioned on my podcast. On August the 20th, I checked in once again to learn that multiple cast members had wrapped, including some that had been filming for several months, but did not get confirmation that the production was finished or that leading man Diego Luna had concluded filming. However, over the weekend, sources gave me the green light on Luna, referenced various members of production having their own rap parties and confirmed that filming had concluded. I've even been fortunate enough to see some sets being taken down. After a long grueling shoot, and as we know guys there were a lot of delays with this series, I firmly believe that filming for Andor is finally over. Andor began filming at Pinewood Studios in London in November of last year. After several delays including Tony Gilroy stepping in to help rewrite the series, and of course the first wave of the pandemic, shutting pre production down in March ahead of a planned June 2020 shoot. But in spite of all of the unforeseen obstacles and delays, the cast and crew pushed through and Andor has now completed filming and will move into post-production. So some very exciting stuff indeed in this article and I can't wait to see the finished product in 2022. The Andor series comes out early next year and we expect it to be the first release right after the Book of Boba Fett. It's going to have 12 episodes in its first season and apart from Diego Luna as Cassian Andor, Ben Mendelsohn will return as Krennic, Genevieve O'Reilly is going to return as Mon Mothma, Forrest Whitaker is returning as Saul Guerrero and we also know that Stellan Skarsgård has been cast alongside some other newbies to the Star Wars universe. But apart from those which are confirmed, what I can tell you is that we are in for a couple of really unexpected cameos. As many of you are aware, I know two people who worked on the set of Andor which filmed very near to where I live. And over the last few months, a couple of really amazing details were sent to me. I can't name names or say too much, but this show is really going to be much more than what some people are making it out to be. I've said this before, but the show is not only a Rogue One prequel, but a standalone show that takes place in a very interesting part of the timeline. It's this very part of the timeline that could introduce some familiar faces in the show that you might not expect. But knowing that we saw Chopper in Rogue One, and with Lucasfilm trying to connect the live action shows to the animated ones, especially Star Wars Rebels, some of that is going to play into the Andor series. I think it's fair to say as a fandom that we've been so focused on The Mandalorian and its spin-offs that we've really slept on Andor as a series. I think when we get a trailer the hype train is really going to start but don't expect it to only be Rogue One 2.0, I think we're all going to be very pleasantly surprised by how much the series does and the sorts of storylines that it tells. For comparison's sake, just think back to before The Bad Batch came out. Many of us wondered why it was necessary to have an entire series dedicated to a group of enhanced clones who played a small role in season 7 of the Clone Wars. Well it turned out that the Bad Batch was so much more than that and was a Trojan horse for many other elements of the post-Clone Wars era which none of us expected. All in all the series exceeded many of our expectations. I think the same is going to be true of the Andor series and from what I've seen and heard we're in for something big. I also want to bring up the fact that the series is going to take us back to some very familiar planets. A few months ago it was rumoured that Coruscant would appear prominently in the show. And while it's true that it did feature briefly in the Galen Erso flashback in Rogue One, Lucasfilm want to show us more of the planet and I'm all for it. As a prequels lover, Coruscant is such a special planet to me and I'm sure many of us share that very same opinion. I was really sad when I read that Colin Trevorrow's episode 9 was initially going to include Coruscant, but when JJ Abrams took over, the Jewel of the Fate script was completely scrapped. So to know that we're finally returning to Coruscant in the Andor series puts a big smile on my face. Something else I've noticed about the Andor series lately is that the press is really starting to push it, which is really awesome because it does deserve a lot of attention. I've seen more and more articles about it and 
I think that once the marketing starts from Lucasfilm's end, there is going to be a massive increase in fans taking interest. But all in all, Andor was always set up to be the lesser of the 2022 shows, at least in terms of hype. With Obi-Wan Kenobi, The Mandalorian Season 3 and The Bad Batch Season 2 all being released in the same year, Andor never really had a chance to meet the excitement of the others, especially when you're talking about the Obi-Wan Kenobi series and The Mandalorian. And admittedly, I fell to this assumption as well, but what I will say is, don't sleep on the Andor series. It's going to make some huge connections to other parts of Star Wars, and I can see it being a lot of fun. But let me know what you think in the comments down below, and now we're going to be talking about The Bad Batch. After the season 1 finale part 2 Kamino lost, we were left wondering what is going to happen to Crosshair. While this remains largely a mystery for now, I came across a very interesting theory by CBR, who claim that Crosshair might be the next Agent Callus, so let's see what they have to say. George Lucas has famously said of Star Wars that it's like poetry, it rhymes. And that sentiment can not only be seen in the shades of repetition throughout the Skywalker saga, but it's also prominent in Dave Filoni's world building work. Both the Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels have crafted clever parallels, whether it's Ahsoka Tano's last steps as a Jedi leaving the temple mirroring Anakin's own last steps, or intertwining Ahsoka and Ezra Bridger's stories so they follow similar hero journeys in Rebels. But now with the Bad Batch's first season for finale, another possible parallel is being set up in the form of Crosshair's redemption. It seems as if the former member of Clone Force 99 could follow a similar path to Rebel's favourite, Agent Callus. And while this storyline could play out in a number of different ways, the revelations and motivations in the finale hint at a possible repeating stanza of storytelling. In the final moments of the Bad Batch's season 1 finale, Crosshair actively rescues Omega and helps his brothers to escape off-world. Though he himself elects to stay behind and hitch a hopeful ride back to the Empire, Hunter's impassioned words against the Empire's atrocities seem to parallel not only the Mandalorian, but also a conversation between Zeb and Agent Callus in Rebel Season 2. In the episode The Honourable Ones, when they're stranded together on the ice moon of Geonosis, they're forced to work together to survive. And I will admit this is not a parallel that I made but it's a very clever one nonetheless. Crosshair presents a highly probable mirror for Callus's arc, but this time it's played out in the Bad Batch with a different character. Whatever happens to Crosshair going forward, it's certainly going to be interesting. And I just wanted to share with you this very fascinating parallel. But what do you guys think? Let me know what you thought of everything we spoke about in today's news update. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're brand new and a huge welcome if you are. And also be sure to check out my Patreon. The link is down there in the description. But otherwise, my dear friends, I'll see you in the next one. I'm Star Wars Meg wishing you all a phenomenal rest of the day, no matter where you dwell in the galaxy. Have a good one.